Star Trek Beyond. So this is the newest movie in the Star Trek series, the rebooted series. While it was an excellent movie, and I enjoyed it quite thoroughly, I actually believe it's the weakest of the three new Star Trek movies. The depth of the emotional aspects of this movie wasn't as strong as the other two movies. They tried, they they presented situations and they presented possibilities in the, in the picture, I can't go into details without ruining something, that didn't quite work as strongly as the previous two movies, I felt. It was almost like that was shoehorned in a little bit, at least from my opinion. The action was really good. In typical Star Trek fashion, the action was top notch. The special effects were really good. A couple of the shots they did, especially towards the end of the movie, were just mind boggling how they did it. It was just looked absolutely amazing. The acting, just like the other two Star Trek movies, all the characters fit it to a T. They do like, it's a new version of an old favorite and they do it really well. I especially like Kirk and Spock. Their, their dynamic is perfect. It's different than the original dynamic, but it's still, it's still great. I love it. Now, when it comes to the actual story, I felt that the story, at least for the first three quarters of the movie, was kind of basic. It was exciting. It was interesting. An action story. But I don't feel it had a whole lot of depth to it. It was bad guy bent on world domination, or in this case, multiple world domination. The good guys trying to fight him with the, the lowered odds. You know, they're the underdog. I've seen it a million times. It, it, just the same, it was the same thing as what I've seen before. But to take away from the enjoyment of the film, not necessarily, but I think that a little more creativity in it probably would have been appreciated. The film really relies on its action. The first quarter of the movie is kind of slow. It's a lot of exposition. It's a lot of getting to the point where everything happens, getting to the right place. But once that hits, it's action, 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 action. Straight through the full, the full movie. This isn't necessarily a bad thing if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for an action-packed movie, this is definitely a good choice. If you're looking for a deep story like I had said earlier, it might not be the story for you. It's a little shallow in my opinion. Overall, if you enjoyed the last two Star Trek rebooted movies, I would say see this movie. It's, it's actually quite excellent. The little, pe little nitpick that I've said, they're not necessarily going to take away from the enjoyment of the movie as a whole. The last thing that really bothered me about this movie is it suffers from those moments where you're like, how did that person know that? The person just miraculously knows where something is or knows how to do something that they have no right of knowing how to do or knowing where it's at. That always breaks immersion for me. It happens in a lot of movies, especially action movies, where they just assume that this person would know this X, Y, and Z when you're like, how did they know that? They've never been here. So that kind of bugged me a little bit, but once again, it's a nit pick. Overall, the movie was very enjoyable. So I'm going to give this movie an 8 out of 10. It's a good movie. It's enjoyable. I do believe it's the weakest out of the new three Star Trek movies, but it is a fun action movie. So if you're looking for a good action movie as you enjoyed the first two Star Trek movies, this is definitely a good choice. So uh, Star Trek Beyond, or as I like to call it, Star Trek 13, you know, in the past has always been the bad Star Trek movies. The odd numbers are always the ones that you're like, it's not gonna be good. So this definitely breaks that exception. It's a really fun Star Trek film. They stuck with what really has worked in the, in the last two movies, which are the actors, all super spot on with their characters. Particularly, I have to call out Spock and McCoy as the two characters that they decide, hey, let's put these two together for an extended period of time. That is the best idea you can possibly have, conflict. The rest of the actors are, are good as well, including the villain. Star Trek films usually are actually better when they have a good villain. This one has that. And his motives are a little mysterious, but there's a nice mystery about that. I was able to figure it out. I think the less that you know about the plot of this movie, the more fun you're gonna have going into it. I would say at least every movie, or maybe even every other movie, the Enterprise has to get destroyed. Well, no surprises there, of course, once again. That's not really what it's about. Just the continuing adventures of these characters. Special effects, top notch. In the past, there have been a lot of shots of the ship, sort of like these lovingly filmed 15 minute long sequences of looking at the Enterprise, which is definitely over the top. This time they focused more on this uh, futuristic city in space, which was absolutely incredible. Totally worth the 15 minutes of, of looking at it in this film. I really don't have too many bad things to say about it, but overall, it's a solid nine out of 10. I thoroughly enjoyed Star Trek Beyond. Now, I have a disclaimer, I'm a fangirl for my whole life. The um, original series was in syndication when I was born, and I was literally raised on it with my mother's milk. I'm a lifelong fan. I really enjoyed this movie. The visuals were amazing. The design of the new um, Starbase was incredible. A shout out to the actors. I think they do a really good job of portraying the characters that we know and love. And a shout out to Carl Urban because he does an amazing Dr. McCoy. Like, he nailed 
all the mannerisms that DeForest Kelly had. I enjoyed the story thoroughly. I did not see what was coming. The new alien races were um, creative. They weren't just humans with a little makeup on. They actually did a really good job. They've gotten much better making creative looking aliens. I really enjoyed that. Costume design was dead on, looked just like Starfleet uniform should. And I really enjoyed the whole story. The action was great. The acting was good. Out of, I would give this movie a 9 out of 10. The only reason I don't give it a 10 is because Wrath of Khan is the Star Trek film I hold all others to and it was not Wrath of Khan, but it was pretty close. I, I suggest if you're a Star Trek fan at all, you should see this movie. Well, I've been hearing bad things about this movie from the early critics saying, this is why critics will hate Star Trek VR. I'm like, oh great, so the new director did screw it up. No, he didn't. Justin Lin did a really good job for this being his first big sci-fi that he's ever directed. For those of you who don't know him, he directed a couple of the Fast and Furious films. So going into this, it starts off a little episodic, to quote James Kirk directly from the movie. And it did. The story did feel a little episodic. It felt like a grand series finale or a grand season finale from something like Star Trek Voyager or something like that. But that does that's not a bad thing. This is actually a very good story. It has a lot more action in it, and for a while the story doesn't really have much depth until near the end when they make certain revelations about the character, particularly the main villain. Special effects, top notch, nothing that looked fake. Won't be surprising if it gets an Oscar nod for best visual effects. As far as story, music goes, Michael Cicchino, if I pronounced that correctly, I hope. Awesome job as always. Music score, not as good as the previous two films, and I will say out of the three, this one is the second best. Now, the Into Darkness, as good as it really was, I think they tried too hard to copy Wrath of Khan, and they messed up a couple of things in there that I wasn't really happy about. Good movie, but when I, if I'm going to compare it to Darkness with Beyond, I'd say Beyond is a little bit better. I really look forward to the fourth one because they're saying the guy, Chris Hemsworth, who plays his own for Thor, is going to come back in the fourth movie, which has been confirmed, by the way. He's going to play George Kirk. I don't know if it's in a flashback, but I hope it's a time travel story. I love time travel. We haven't had that since way back in 2009. I can barely remember. But still, time travel is awesome in Star Trek. It never gets old for me. So out of 10, I'm going to give this a, a no, solid 9. The second best of the reboot series. I hope J.J. Abrams comes back to direct the fourth one, but if not, I I guess I can trust Justin Lin to take the reins again for the set for this next one. So I'm curious to know, what is your favorite Star Trek movie? Go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews every week. And remember, you heard it here at The Source.